Okay, so, th so thanks Dave, thanks everyone. My name is Jason, I, I work with Dave for Artifacts. We are not a blockchain company, we are a for-profit software company and data company, however, and we came here to visit with you all the way from California. And so we've heard a lot of interesting stuff about crypto kitties and um, some skepticism from researchers, which is all interesting to hear. So what I wanna to try to do today is actually instead of talk and show slides, I'm gonna to try to show you some working, working software. I'm gonna walk through some, just some simple examples to, just to illustrate some of the tools that, we, that we've built here. And hopefully this will be interesting and compelling. And of course, our platform is live. Anyone can try it out for free or we can talk later if you wanna hear more details. Um, just real quickly to reiterate, so we have a website that looks pretty nice. We have a platform. Researchers are using this now. Any of you can come and try it out if you'd like, but we really know that this theme of integration is really gonna be, gonna be key to our, our, our success with artifacts. Changing behaviors is hard, it takes a long time. <laughs> that would be nice if some serendipity fell into place, but realistically, in order for us to be successful, to add value to users, to you know, make money as a company, we need to be integrated in tools that users are already you know, already using. So that's, that's more or less what I'm gonna to try to show here. I'm gonna go through, and there's a timer somewhere. I have 28 minutes. I will be, um, I will be efficient. Okay, so a couple things that, that Dave mentioned here. I'm, I'm already logged in, so I'm gonna do a shortcut, but um, if, if you wanted to log in with, with Orchid or, or any of these other things, again, people are already in those places, so we make it easy with a single click to do that. I am, I of course, already have an account. It knows my name. I'm gonna go in. And so, essentially, what we have is we have a web-based platform, we have APIs and integrations with all kinds of different things. It's a, it's a growing list. And the software allows a user, a group of users, to create a project. A project can be anything you like. It might result in a data set, it might result in a poster, it might result in a you know, journal article down the line, that's fine, but you can create a project, you can add stuff to it, you can share it with colleagues, you can make it public to make it more findable. Um, and of course, the, you know, the blockchain integration, which as James mentioned, building a blockchain infrastructure is fun for some people, it wasn't fun for us, so when Bloxburg came along, we were very excited and said, we're gonna use that. The perception of authority coming from the Max Planck Society was great for us, and the idea of an immutable timestamp or the perception of the value that that adds is something that we've heard from a lot of users, from pharma companies, from research labs, from publishers, all the different people that are out there in the ecosystem all like that idea. And so we've you know, built that in along with the whole you know, full stack web application. And with that blockchain element, we do two things. Proof of existence, which is a little bit of a mouthful, but essentially that's this initial timestamp transaction. And as Dave spent time talking about, attributions, so citations. And again, we want to be able to make it easy for people to give and get citations for anything that they want to share. I th there was a question about how do those citation counts then sort of get out. Now, of course, we need to feed that, those citation counts out to people who are interested in seeing them. You can see them on this, this dashboard. Of course, right here, I have a couple of proofs and attributions. We'll show those working live in just a second. but. The publishers in particular that we're talking to, they, they all love this idea. Small publishers with one journal, bigger publishers, they say, yeah, feed us those attribution feeds because we think those are gonna be valuable. And we're, we're gonna mix those in with all these other metrics. Whether there are too many metrics or not, that's not for me to decide, but the publishers are interested in more metrics and they think this idea of a citation to something other than a preprint, which usually happens like after someone's paper's already been accepted. So, to any of these other things Dave mentioned, a data set, uh, a research instrument, of course that's gonna vary across the different um, academic disciplines, but again, users are saying they, wanna, they want a little bit of protection for that, they wanna make it easier to get that stuff out there. 
at the other end, publishers and, and funders and everyone, they want to see those little numbers associated with those things. Maybe not little numbers, maybe they become bigger numbers. They can slice and dice that with the other metrics as they choose, and that's what we're going to try to do here. So I'm going to show you a project. I have a list of projects. Again, these can be sort of anything that we want. I have a bunch here. I actually created a little project that I'm going to share with everyone. I called it the Blockchain for Science Conference. I can, again, add anyone I want. I can make this public. I can drag and drop things in here. Maybe eventually this will turn into a public resource that we want to share and make, and make findable. Maybe we want to write a, a paper and we're going to publish and we'll, we'll start with this. So I actually also, as, as I was paying attention yesterday, I, um, I created a data set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this data set and I'm going to drag this data set file. This happens to be an Excel file, but it could really be anything. So I'm uploading this file to our storage. So Dave mentioned that the system, we ask people to, to upload a file, it stays on the system for a you know, millisecond, we create a hash, we write that to the, the blocks we're going to show that working. In this case, we also do allow folks, if they want to store stuff on our system, just as a courtesy, you can store files. It's, it's AWS S3 bucket, it can be a lot of other things. I'll show you some examples. That's just sort of, if you want to store stuff there, you can. You certainly don't have to. Um, we're not doing anything with those files other than keeping those there for you. So I'm an author of this file, right? Or maybe I'm, I conceptualized it. I did a high amount of work on this. I'm going to now look at this file as it's hosted. You can see it's a preview. Just a little bit of data. Pro admittedly, probably not that valuable of a data set, but I counted the number of male and female attendees at the, at the meeting yesterday. <laughs> Perhaps gender is not a key determinant of whether, whether or not the conference is a success. I, hopefully, all of us think it's pretty successful. But that was something I could use my own observational powers to do live here, and I thought this might be at least a little bit interesting and curious to folks. So. I'm going to now add, add a tag, so we're going to say but, say for, for science con, right? We're going to say um, data set, we're going to say, uh, what else are we going to say? I'm sorry, my typing here is less than perfect. We're going to say Germany, we're going to say Berlin, we're going to say, there we go. Okay, so I added some tags. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to transact this to, to the, the blockchain. You can see it, it's, it's processing right there. So in the meantime, I'm going to go back over to another, another project that I have. I'm going to jump around here just a little bit, folks. So here's a, here's a sample project. Just the other day, I did a similar kind of a thing. This is a psychology sample project where I uploaded this JPEG, right? And then you can see here, if one was so inclined, which as we've heard, sort of mixed messages about, but there certainly are, are plenty of researchers that are not really interested in, in tokens, they're not interested in consensus algorithms, but they generally like the idea, again, at least of the perception of a blockchain adding some additional security to help protect their work, right? But if someone was interested and curious, what is this blockchain thing about? They can go all the way through to James's block, you know, block explorer, and they can see their, their transaction. And what we've done with our smart, smart contract is added some custom bibliographic metadata, including these keywords. So ideally, to Dave's point about making, helping to make researchers work protect it, again, with the timestamp on the, on the blockchain, but also to make it more accessible and findable, by putting in things as simple as keywords, we can then do some unsexy but necessary search engine optimization to make sure that it's easier for folks, other researchers, to find things based on you know, searching for keywords, which many of us do, and then ultimately build on that work and, and cite it. So that's the direct connection with the Blocksburg blockchain. That's one element of, of, of block, you know, blockchain here. Um, we can close that out. We can go back to our other, 
project. We can see whether this transaction has gone through. And of course, the transaction has gone through here as well. So we could look at that again. It all just takes sort of a few seconds. So we, we, have, we have created our own custom bibliographic metadata smart contract. And we're putting that out as open source. So anyone else can use that if, if they like. And the goal there is to, and this thing, this definitely needs to evolve. We're going to add more and more metadata there, again, to make, help make it easier to find these research artifacts. And they are, you know, protected because they're time stamped and transacted to the blockchain. Okay, so those are projects and those are, those are, those are blockchains. If anyone is interested in my, in building on my, my data set here, I put a lot of time into this. I, I would love for you guys to work with it and maybe write papers and you could cite my, my data set that I created right here. Okay, I, I realize that's a little bit of a silly example, but it, hopefully it helps make the point. Um, What's that? Well, yeah, okay, so I didn't put anyone's name. You're, that's true, yeah, so data, data privacy is all, always a concern. And in this case, you saw, I did upload that file to show that you can store things, but the vast majority of um, the use cases are really, you don't need to upload the file. It's really just making, it, making that hash and then writing that hash and the metadata to, um, to the blockchain. And some of that, you can do that actually right from our homepage. You can drag, a drop, drag and drop a file right there you don't even have to be registered. You have to have an email address because we have to have sort of something to key off of initially. So any of you can try this. It takes literally five seconds. You can drag and drop a file, add an email address. It'll email you the hash. And then if you want to do more with it, you can you know, set up an, an account. But you get essentially that, that timestamp right, right there. Um, OK, so we talked a little bit more about how we do it on time. Okay, good. So I have 17 minutes and 54 seconds remaining. That's, that's good. Um, so we're going to go back into the, the platform a little bit and, and show you a few more examples of some of the things that, um, that Dave talked about. So I showed you projects. We have a, sort of a little bit of a, a dashboard. We're, we're not trying to replicate other profiling systems like ResearchGate or anything like that. Basically, we just need sort of a home location where, where you can sort of look at your stuff in, in one glance, right? We also have custom dashboards that we're building for institutions and for organizations. So we're working, for example, with the Journal of the British Blockchain Association. We're building a custom dashboard for them, which we think is pretty cool. It makes sense. We're both sort of, you know, they're interested in blockchain stuff. So, um, and these, these will evolve. But the point here is I want to show you how my proofs of existence and my citation counts can go up, and I'm going to show you that live in just a moment. But we also have, we have quite a few items in our, on our platform already. These are metadata records. Some of these are metadata records you could find in Dimensions or Scopus or, or Google Scholar, but these are things that we sort of put there as, as convenience. We have literally tens of millions of metadata records. The system is pretty smart. It will recommend some things that it thinks I've, you know, I've already done. These are, these are published items, but we mix right in there sort of anything else that I want to, any other metadata records that I want to upload to the system. And you can see, as developing and testing the system, I've added a lot of different things. A lot of these are just sort of test items, but some of these are, are real data sets, right? There's some real data sets. These are some real graphics and so forth that I've used for real real projects. But now the real, so the real value here is, is, is enabling folks to find those things and then you know, cite them when, when we're writing. So I'm going to use one of these tools that I think a lot of other people use. This is Google Docs, right? And here's an example of one of, one of our integrations. Okay. so. Google Docs, I created a, a blank document just this morning. You can see we have a, using our own API, we, we built a little add-on here. And this allows me to search for something. Let me see if it's saved where I want. No, it did not. Okay, so I'm going to go and make sure I find 
something that I know I have published. I'm going to self-cite here, which I know is, is, is sort of, some people don't like that. I'm not, I'm not trying to game the system. I just know that this is something that I've, I have published, and it does have some other citations. OK, so here, again, this is just a sample document, a little bit of a simplistic example, just to try to, try to make the point, right? But we're in Google Docs, where many of us write anyway. Don't need a blockchain for that, but we are going to start writing a basic paper, right? And then we're going to say our references are here. And you can go ahead and you can insert that. And that's going to insert and, and create a basic, basic bibliography. As we all know, there, there are dozens of tools out there that already do that. So that, that's not particularly novel. But what is, what is pretty cool is now I can go back over to my, um, I can go back over to my artifacts platform and I can see that two things have just happened. First of all, it's now created an artifact for my document for me automatically, right? This Berlin document and I could, if I wanted to, I could then add this to that project that I showed a little while ago. I could upload that and all of us could collaborate on it. But it also has now incremented my, my citations, right? So these are the citations here that, as Dave had talked about, given and received. So this just went up. This was 27. You know, a couple minutes ago, this is 28 now. And the, so the main question of how do these citations get out to people, it's sort of been asked in a couple of different ways. Well, one way is by going in here and looking, right? That's if you want to come to our front door. But again, we have data feeds that we're offering out to partners all across the ecosystem so that they can get that. And that can be, you know, that will be updated in real time as much as people are citing the items from, from the artifact system. A Couple of other things that Dave has mentioned that I can demonstrate quickly here. I'm going to so just do a quick search. Again, I said we, we have lots of items already in this system, but here is one in particular. This is an author from Max Planck, and he has all kinds of different, he has all kinds of different things, and essentially what we're looking at here is a direct integration with the Max Planck admin repository, right? So the repositories are already out there. Has anyone ever tried to really find anything in a, in a library repository? It's, it's very hard. It's painful, very painful. These, these are resources that Universities around the world have invested hundreds of millions of dollars in over the last, what, 15 or 20 years. They're supposed to be open, they're supposed to be permanent, but if you ever actually try to go in and use one, it's really, really painful. So we've been talking to librarians all around the world that said, hey, we could integrate, help make that stuff easier to find and, and you know, get used and built upon and cited and so forth. And so to prove that we actually did that, working with James and, and the rest of his team, we've integrated it as a first step with the Edmund repository, which is one of the Max Planck repositories. And you can see that um, here's an example of one of these files. And this happens to be just a little text readme file associated with one of the data sets. And you can click right through to the, you know, to the native interface if one wanted to. Now, one could go to Edmund directly, of course. So we don't, we're not trying to necessarily duplicate exactly what they're doing. We're just trying to pull things together so they're easier to find and to use, and again, to, to cite and to build, build those citations on. Um, OK, so I, I think we're doing pretty well. What else should we try to, to show? So yeah, question. Yeah. How do you, again, writing a paper, and I want to cite an article or something like this. Right? Yes. How do I do it? Well, that, that, that's what I was, I thought I had just showed that with, um, with here. So essentially, in this case, you know, we happen to have built this add-on for Google Docs, and you saw that I just, I just cited that paper. This is a real paper that I wrote with some colleagues I don't know, a year ago, uh -huh. and that's indexed in our, in our database. So by pressing insert, I actually cite. Yeah, that's cited, and it, this just makes a basic bibliography entry here, and again, back onto my, my, you know, back on my dashboard, you can see that's 
that number was lower a few minutes ago, but that, that's right there. And again, so, so the next step for this really to be successful, to add value to all these you know, disparate people and organizations across the ecosystem. Again, whether those, whether those are working well or not isn't really for me to decide, but what we are trying to do, as Dave showed, is just to try to help make it easier for people to get credit for more things that they are doing work on, right? And it's up to, up to any of you as the creators of those, those research artifacts to decide whether they're in the right state that you want to share them or not. But once we do that, we help to protect your IP, and then we help you to get citations. Now, again, then we feed those citations out to anyone else who might be interested in them, in custom dashboard, data feeds to publishers, and so forth. We haven't done all that yet. We're quote unquote a startup or a new software company that's just getting started on a lot of these things. But that is the vision. And we feel pretty confident about the vision in the sense that we talk to and listen to a lot of these different players, right? And they are all saying, yeah, that makes, that makes a lot of sense to us. They're not saying that's going to be super easy. You're just going to push a button and it's going to happen. It's going to be a lot of work. And it's going to take, again, a little bit of serendipity as almost anything does. But the goal is to continue to build more and more of these integrations into, um, into the tools and the platforms and the systems that are already established in the scholarly research and ecosystem, you know, publishing ecosystem. Again, whether those are good or bad, we're not, trying to, we're not really trying to revolutionize that. We're trying to work from within the system to help add value for users and you know, all the other stakeholders. So if we go back over to our projects, I can show you a couple of other examples of other, other, tool, other integration tools that we already have. I mean, certainly for those of you who are, who are coders or, or tinkerers or hackers, things like you know, Bitbucket and, and GitHub and GitLab, these are not blockchain dependent by any means. These are, these are straightforward, proven you know, web REST APIs that you know, almost any other web service. And if you see something on this list, like, oh yeah, that looks pretty cool. We could try that out. Very straightforward. You, you know, do a shared login, share an OAuth token or something. And we're constantly asking and listening to folks on you know, what else should we add to this list, right? So we're talking both to the developers and the companies and publishers of these kinds of tools and saying, hey, you guys have an API, we, let's see if we can do an integration. But it's really much more meaningful to hear from individual people that say, instead of this one, we use another tool. Could you guys do an integration for that and just make it that much easier for us to combine those? So please let us know, if, especially if you try out the system and um, you, know, you think, hey, this is another tool I use. It would be great if you could plug those two things together. I mean, we're definitely all ears on that. Um, OK, so I think we're doing pretty well, and I still have 6 minutes and 55 seconds. So hopefully we have some, some comments and, and questions, or if there's something else that I went through quickly that you want me to go through again, just to demonstrate. Otherwise, we should, um, we sh I should listen and try to answer some questions. OK, yeah. So, I think it takes a second to, to work. Yeah, so we perform, I don't know. Well, so before you, uh, you showed uh, this quick upload or quick uh, way to put it into the, into the blockchain without, yeah, this one. So this is without having an account. Yeah. So this is without having an account. Yes. But then how does the, the sig signature work? How? You need, you need to have at least an email address, mm -hmm. yeah. And so then we will, again, you would, you would upload your file, whatever file it is. It's just on the system for a millisecond while we write the hash, and then that hash. And we do give you, I mean, I can show you what it looks like. If you want to um, select a file, I can just even pick this PowerPoint file, which isn't very real. You would add some tags or, or some keywords. You know, all this is basic, just web, web upload stuff. And then it would email, you know, it would email a link to that, to the hash as soon as it's created. And then, in order to do anything more with it, we want you, of course, to create, to create an account. But it's going—I mean, that, 
that hash and that, that proof of existence transaction is going to persist no matter what, right? I mean, it's probably not really valuable for artifacts or for you as a user unless you create you know, an account and you want to do, do more with it. But this is, we're just trying to make it as you know, simple as possible for someone to say, hey, what is this about? We're gonna, you know, we're gonna, we want to try this out. But again, this is, we're realistic. We know that we can't expect millions and millions of researchers to just stumble upon our front door, even if they think it sounds cool, and, and you know, start creating, um, creating files. So that's why the integrations, API, all that stuff, we think is really much more valuable. And in, in the it just takes a little bit longer to develop all of those things. Yeah. Yeah. There's a question in, in the back as well. Yeah, thanks again for the demonstration. Um, just as a, as a researcher myself, right, I mean, on the one hand, you would create an inflation of citations, right? So everybody, like if we do partial publications, all the researchers would kind of climb up in their citation count, right? So it's kind of, a, 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 if it works, it would be on equal level. The second thing is, like most researchers would tell their students that a, a, a set of data needs to be put in a context to have a certain value, and that's why we write papers, right? So to just, I mean, there might be different fields, whatever, if you have clinical studies and so on, that data set, whatever, you try a certain medication or so on certain types of diseases, and that might have a value by itself and might even be, uh, have a high commercial value. Right, and I think we had some talks uh, yesterday and so on, on 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 that one, but I would say the typical information that my colleagues create only makes sense if you write a story, uh, create a, a, a writing context around it, which is essentially a paper, whether it's a high-level paper or low-level paper, and then presently you have the option to only put the key data into your main paper and just have supplementary information where the ones who are deeper interested or need more detail can resort to it while the others can just read the main paper to get like the gist of, of, of what this is about. So I, I, I don't really, can, can you give me some examples where except for maybe high value medical data where these bits of information would be kind of as a standalone so valuable that they are of use for others uh, in, in contrast to just writing a paper. I mean, it's, it's like we all can type and, 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 and so on, so why would we not do that? What, what's the value of, of this kind of fractional information where every good researcher would know how to convert that into a full paper and then you are in the, in the, in the routine of, of scientific publishing again? Yeah, there's a lot there. I'll, I'll try to unpack it. I think the main answer is it's going to be very dis discipline specific, so it's going to vary, vary quite a bit. And, and again, we're, we're not trying, I think Dave made this point pretty nicely, we're, we're not trying to contrast with anything that's working well right now. Again, all the problems with peer review, whatever, I mean, journals still seem to publish a lot of articles that people have, get, get something, something out of, I suppose. So there's nothing we're doing with artifacts that's trying to undermine any of that. I mean, if people want to publish articles that still that's fine, if, but even if they are planning to publish an article, in many disciplines, being able to share the constituent components that ultimately comprise that article at different points makes sense for different, different researchers. And we've, we, we've heard from literally hundreds and hundreds of people in different disciplines that say that makes a lot of sense. Just personally, for my own PhD dissertation 15 years ago, I have a few citations. My, own career doesn't really depend on citations, but I like doing, doing research. I don't have to pretend to know what, the, what my end users are doing, because I can go through those processes myself. But honestly, even now, 15 years later, every six months or so, I get a request <laughs> from someone around the world that they want to ask, they want to use a very specific survey instrument that I developed for my dissertation. They're, of course, free to do that, but that's a constituent component of the final work. It may, does make sense on its own, and people do want to use that. And make, if I was able to put that on artifacts 15 years ago, it would have been way easier for people to find, and it would have been, um, you know, people might have wanted to cite that and give me credit for building on that one specific component. 
if my dissertation was in the form of a journal article, could I also have listed that as a piece of supplemental information? Yeah, sure. I, I, you you could, could have done that as well. Yeah. So, but I think the main answer is, and I have 20 seconds, <laughs> eight seconds, yeah. So the, I think it's really going to depend on the individual discipline and the behaviors. Again, we're not presuming to change those, but we're seeing signs that they're evolving. And as this information is easier for people to get to and cite and secure, we think that the, the behaviors will, you know, will adopt to that. All right, so that's my time. Thanks, everyone.